Hello there, and welcome back to Melancholia in Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration and Crastorio 2, where stuff has been happening, so we're going to be taking a look into that. We're also going to have a look at how I've been improving the train systems over on Agnea to make sure the Vulcanite supply keeps going, and what we're doing with all the rubbish back over in Norbit, because it was getting a little bit out of hand at one point. So, let's start off in the asteroid field of sadness. Over in Melancholia, Mike has been continuing to work on the Naquitite supply, which is fantastic because we're trying to get through a lot more Naquitite. We're not doing a very good job of it because the science isn't running and therefore we're not making any sort of deep space science and therefore we're just not using up the supplies we've got. And so that's why we had that big jam that we were looking at uh, last week. But at the moment, uh, things, yeah, things are going very well out here. As you can see, we've got multiple drop-off stations over here with multiple trains in them. And they're all, well, they all seem to have found some uh, Naquitite to drop off and the system is all completely full. Now, part of the reason it's full I noted is that over here we don't seem to have any Naquitite actually being passed through and I'm not sure whether that's because Mike has deliberately turned it off because I did do remember him talking about how he'd accidentally overfilled the Arcalink storage up here so perhaps he, he did this temporarily while he was trying to empty things or it's entirely possible that he accidentally selected Naquitite crystal instead of uh, instead of Naquitite so let's fix that for him for a moment just to see the system working again properly so we want to feed through the actual Naquitite itself not the crystal the Naquitite and then we'll copy that to all of the other um, output ones as well. And there we go, there we have the nice healthy flow going through it over, over to uh, Talos. And this is probably going to stop fairly soon because at the other end there's only two or three belts bringing the macrotite out. You can see, oh, three belts are spot on. <laughs> so bringing the macrotite out to go over to all these pulverizers to be processed. And then that's going to flow down here and it's going to fill this belt up here. And then eventually it's going to jam up because we're still not using any macrotite. There's still, there's still no, no, no naquium being taken out. These belts are both stopped. And there's a plentiful supply of it coming down in the trains from all orbit which is coming over from Stardust over the this by by spaceship uh, the old old-fashioned way before we had teleport chests so this this warehouse down here is completely full so in a moment we'll see yet yeah, we'll start to get the uh, the flow of here here it comes the, the flow of crushed nacrotite coming through and then starting to fill up this belt down here and and, and it, it's just going to block up so it's not a serious problem we don't have any uh, nacrotite coming over from um, fr from melancholia it just it's just something that's going to need to be poked in the, in the relevant place at some point as you can see, the system is working nicely. We've got a nice healthy flow coming through here, and we've got a, and then we've got a supply coming in from all of these belts. We've got a little bit coming in from the from the local nearby mining systems, and now we're pulling it through on these belts. You can see that uh, over here, we, we can't dig it up as fast as we can take it away, and the same is true down here as well. You can see the belts are gradually emptying as they go up into the system, uh, and and that's why we have the train system over here. So the idea behind this is that we uh, take is that the trains will will trundle off to the the mines over here where they can then fill up, and they can bring larger quantities over from the mining outposts and in the long term we would like to have more mines set up uh, there's a couple more patches down here that could be uh, hooked up and another one up here there's going to be more of them further away um, like over here apparently um, it's very, very convenient that uh, Mike has been tagging these uh, and I, I, I can't say I blame him given that whenever I look at one of these things I go oh is that a patch no no that's rare metals is that a patch and that one actually is a patch but it's a quite small oh no that's 2.4 million that's not too bad but that's rare metals and so on you can if you look carefully you can tell the difference but it's a bit you have to be a bit of a super chromat to see the difference at a glance. Um, that one's a richer purple than that one, but yeah, they're pretty similar. Oh, and as you can see down on this patch down here, that really shows how much of a difference there is between the two, because this tiny little asteroid has a bit of each on it, just to make things even more fun. So yes, as I say, uh, Mike's um, update is that he's added in these two new mines and the, and the associated stations with them. And over here, you need you need a pair of stations if you're doing it the way Mike's doing it. So he's got the uh, the sulfuric acid coming in on, on by train here and being unloaded into the into the tank. And then presumably when there's less than, yeah, here we go, when there's less than 10,000 left in the tank, he'll call for another train that'll come out and unload some more there. So this is going to work exactly as you'd hope it would. It seems to be absolutely fine, no no problems with that. And then up here you've got the same sort of thing where the, uh, the warehouse fills up from the supply of Naquitite coming in from the two mines, which are all speed modules still. You still need to put some beacons in over here and set those modules. It'd be a lot cheaper. Um, and we'll gradually try and fill this warehouse up. And um, I suspect we're taking it away a little bit faster than we're producing it, but that's just why we need more mines. And over here we've got the standard sort of thing where you say, for every 2,000 um, Naquitite that is available, no, if there is more than 2,000 Naquitite available, then call for a train, the train can come over and grab it, and that'll all work nicely. The other thing that's rather important to keep trains working is power for them, and these are the space trains, and they run off batteries, of which you can see a, whole, a grand total of zero on this belt. And that's kind of my fault, and we'll touch on that in a moment, although I, I think I talked about it last week. But the idea is the batteries will come in along here, they'll be fed into the train, and the tr this train has got, well, it's got a, a reasonable number in it. It's got 29, that should keep it going for a little while. And each time one goes flat, it'll be unloaded over here. It'll go off down the belt, down the disposal system, up here. And uh, it'll come along this belt. And like that, you can see it got grabbed by that um, by that inserter there. It's gone into a charger, and that's going to refill the battery, and then it can be put back onto the belt over here. 
and Mike set up, it, it, it looks a little bit spaghetti, but it's actually a, a quite a nice, neat little system. And the way this works is that over here, where the batteries are, the brand new batteries that are coming through the, the chest here, they'll get passed through into here and then put up onto the belt over here. And because of the way the, the belts are configured or set up like here, it's going to put them all onto the, the left-hand side of the belt, or the, the port side of the belt, shall we say, uh, which is currently the bottom, and then down here, uh, it comes all the way over here, and as it whips through here, these inserters are set to output to the far side of the belt. So as so, the new batteries will come in on the near side, but there will always be room to unload the the, uh, the recharge batteries onto the far side. And then as they come round down to here, the batteries that are on on the, the far side, that like that one will get priority over any that are on the inside. And that's deliberate, because that means we'll then use the recycled batteries, the recharged batteries, before using the new batteries, and it will make sure that we don't jam up the recycling system with a load of batteries that we just can't get rid of. So that's why there's a little bit of sort of a twist and tangle of belts down here. And that's, yeah, work, working nicely. He's also pulling out the dead batteries here as well with this splitter. They're getting sent out and they're being put into, they're just being put into the, uh, the warehouse down here along with all the naquatite. And so the idea is that, that as you can see, they're then filtered to be taken away. They will then be dumped into the Arco chest and eventually they'll have to find their way back over to Talos where they'll come out here. Eventually I'll get around to fitting the splitter and then I'll be able to tell this to split them off to, be, to send the dead batteries down this way, which puts them onto the, uh, the general Naquium disposal system. And eventually this means they should find their way all the way back over to Norbit where they can be recharged over there. So this, this, this system is all, it's all coming together very, very nicely, and I think it's going to work quite well. The only problem is that the, uh, the Naquium train isn't really running all that much, and that means it's not taking very many of the batteries down, the batteries down, because there's an inserter here that's set to load them. Is, is this working nicely? I can't... No, there is a red light on it, so this, this, is, this has all failed, because we have a big problem with the memory cell system, because we keep losing power over here. I think I've talked about this before, but yeah, it's, a bit of a, it's, it's quite a big problem. Um, we, need, we either need to keep increasing the numbers every, every half hour or so, whenever there's been a bit of a problem, or you know, the alternative is to just come back out here and fix this, so that we stop using all of the accumulators like this, and have, actually have enough power generation over here, because yeah, when it's like this, it's not going to work. So we need a lot more solar out here, and that is high on my to-do list. I didn't do it last week, because I was busy messing around with other things but I do want to come out here expand the solar field a lot to make sure that we don't have these sort of problems again because I'm pretty sure Talos is capable of using a lot of power when it wants to. And so with the minor exception of the loaders over here this whole system is now working very nicely. It's um, I guess this is what I would call a full proof of concept because we've got we've got the, the train system is working I say we've got Mike has got the train system working he's got mining demonstrated mining is working transport is demonstrated everything here is working um, he could do with a lot more train batteries but that's on me but otherwise yeah it, it, it's great it works works fine it just needs a little bit more expansion so we can have a few more uh, a few more trains running from a few more stations and just generally bringing in a lot more naquatite although as i say at the moment not actually a problem we have quite a lot stored over here this, this warehouse is still full these warehouses i mean they're, 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 they're gradually emptying so we are getting through the naquatite yes sure but it's um it's happening relatively gradually we've got quite a lot of buffer here and i was gonna say we have even more buffer in all the ships that are queued up to land on talos but it looks like they've started flying again so we must have used a decent amount of naquium and started the ships flying in and here's the star stardust express on its way in to, to unload so we've got some coming in at the moment but it looks like we're making quite significant head, headway into the total into the quantities of Naquium available. It's, it's getting used now so it's a good thing that Mike is out there setting up that uh, that new facility because these spaceships wouldn't be able to keep up on their own anymore I don't think. At least that's the theory and the design. And we can see out here we've got quite a few of them making their way, actually there's quite a lot making their way back to Kalidas at the moment and there's only one making its way out so in theory, maybe that means I need to make another one, but I think at this point I'm not going to worry about it until it becomes an actual problem. And if it does become an actual problem, then I'm going to ask Mike if he could perhaps uh, just generate it a little bit faster out in Melancholia and start feeding it through, because I feel like that's easier than making more spaceships. Now, this may be a sort of, it feels easier because it's Mike doing the effort, not me, but even so, I, th I think it's probably going to be a little bit easier to pump it all through the teleport chest than to build more, 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 more spaceships. Even, even if there does seem to be quite a lot of room for them. So yeah, when the spaceships are flying flat out, it seems this is about the distance apart they, they, they appear. Um, maybe that one, because I suspect there's quite a lot of backlog in the in the facility on Stardust. So that's the, that's the distance apart they end up being when there's plenty available. And then as we get through that backlog, as it starts to be a bit more normal, they're more like this sort of distance apart. But we'll find out when uh, Star-Lord leaves as well. And in the meantime, we'll just keep pumping it through this chest over here. And then I suppose the other part of that is that I will then need to expand the uh, pulverization system over here to use all of these output belts. We're only using half of it at the moment. We actually, we're using th no, we're using three out of seven. So we're using less than half of it. There's room to at least put in another copy of this over here and then one more, one more extra column of it, and then feed all of that crushed aquatite through. And 
Well, I mean, actually, at the moment, it does seem to be absolutely fine. But they, we have the capacity to run this a lot faster, is what I'm saying. So even after, even as we start to use more and more and more uh, naquium, oh, you can see the the ingots are now being fed through into the um, into the chest over here. As we as we uh, get through them, you can see it starting and stopping depending on the uh, the signals coming over from the other end. Although, ooh, no, that's that's starting and stopping based on um, the amount of power available. So each time the power dips dips below um, what we actually need, the belt stops running because the signal stops coming through. And then when we have a little bit of power available, we realise we've got a shortage, so the belt starts to flow. I really need to fix the power on Talos. That's uh, quite a high priority, I think, because it does seem to be causing a lot of problems. However, I have been busy elsewhere in the last stream, which is why I haven't gone out and done that. So this is Agnea, the planet where all of the Vulcanite comes from at the moment. And as you can see, it's running flat out at the moment. So that's 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 a good sign, I think. It means we're we're using lots. Well, it means we're using lots of Vulcanite, and we have. We'd, we'd like to have more of it available, should we say. So we're pumping huge amounts into this train. That's, that looks amazing around here. Uh, these insert... These loaders really could do with an upgrade. I think this this whole area needs purpling properly. Um, I didn't notice those when I did the upgrade, so that's um, that's embarrassing. But these should all be a bit faster so we can, you know, load the train a bit quicker. Although I suppose it doesn't really matter because we've got so much loading capacity down on the, uh, the south side of it that it, it'll still fill the train quite quickly. That'll probably only give us about a... 10 or 15 percent boost i think giving having a vague feel for the numbers off the top of my head but it'll still be it's still worth doing still make things go a little bit faster but that's not what i came here to talk about so this is the system i upgraded a couple of weeks ago uh, i talked about it last week and in it's running yeah it's, it's running pretty nicely however i noticed that there were some severe problems over here with the amount of vulcanite ore that we had available the trains weren't bringing it in fast enough and i think there were there were multiple problems here one was that the trains didn't move quickly enough, which meant it took them a very, very long time to get out of the mines and then get back again, and that seemed to be causing shortages. And the other problem was the stations weren't calling for them all the time, which meant the trains were spending an awful lot of time not actually going out to the stations that needed them, and just sort of sitting sitting around waiting, going, oh, I don't know, I don't think I'm needed over there yet. And so, in order to fix the first one of those, I came over here with a load of boosted locomotives, and we'll, we'll take a quick look at that in a moment. But the boosting of a locomotive means you go to its equipment grid here, and you make sure it's got eight electric motors, and a, a energy absorber, and some batteries in it. And that means that the train can then sort of fill up with power when it parks next to one of these Tesla coils, and we've got Tesla coils available at all of the stations around here, so they'll charge up whenever they're at the drop-off stations. They'll charge up nicely here, they'll fill the batteries up, and that means when the trains leave, they accelerate really, really quickly, which means they get to their destination much more quickly. Which just generally, it, it improves throughput in the train system fantastically, and it just means the trains run around much more nice, much more effectively. As we'll, as I'm hoping we'll see in a moment when yes, here we go, the train's emptied. So now you'll see that it accelerates away, and it's going. That's a, that's a reasonably good acceleration, especially as we're only running at 35 UPS at the moment. So the trains are now quite a bit quicker. In order to keep track of which trains I'd updated, I recoloured them. So that's why they're all blue now instead of traditional Factoria red. Um, however, because we've got the Train Trails mod installed, that meant that when I changed the uh, the colour of one of the trains, it got this rather fetching underglow effect. So we've now got lots of blue glow trundling around the base lines, which, I mean, it looks pretty cool. But originally we were planning to only have this sort of blue underglow effect on the manned trains, on our personal trains, the ones we, we would have just for riding around ourselves. We weren't going to put it on the, on the automated ones like this, but it seems to have just sort of, you know, happened, um, because I wanted to be able to keep track of which trains I'd upgraded. And yeah, I stand by, the easiest way to keep track of it was to recolour them. I have done other trains different colours though, so the ones that go off to the core mines are green, so they'll have a green underglow, which looks very, very fetching, and there's one, the one that goes off to get oil, I think I think I might have made it black, because, you know, oil is black, um, comes from somewhere, I, I, I don't know where the train's gone, but it's, it, it's definitely a different colour, and that seems, but it seems to work nicely, it, it, it allowed me to keep track of which ones I'd done, as I say. This one I didn't bother to upgrade because we're not actually doing anything with all this uh, immersite we're digging up. It goes into an underground belt here and is never seen again. So I'm quite glad this isn't flowing or we'd be trying to... Or maybe, maybe that's what we use to sort of to fill in all the holes that have been made by the core mining. I, I, I wouldn't like to say. I did have an amusing moment while I was reprogramming the trains. Uh, it was a little bit of a Benny Hill moment where uh, I, I accidentally pulled out the the wagon in the middle of the train instead of, instead of picking up the locomotive. And that meant I just cut the train in half. And because it was moving at the time, uh, well, momentum momentum being what it is, the train just carried on going, so I then had to go and chase it. Uh, this definitely needs some Benny Hill music playing while I do it, however I'd get my uh, video copyright struck if I did that, so I'm not going to. 
I mentioned that the second problem I was having with this system was that the trains were just sitting around waiting and not really going off, not being proactive about going to go and get more stuff. Previously, we had one of the dynamic sort of um, train limit systems, so a station would, would monitor, like the core mine stations still are. So this one here, you can see that it's set to, um, to well, it's, this one's using enable disable rather than train limits, but the point the same thing stands. When it monitors the amount of stuff available in the station and then turns itself on and off based on the amount of stuff. And and so um, we've got the train limit set to one over here, just to make sure we don't get two trains turning up. This, but this is using enable disable. On the, the mining stations, we're doing the same sort of thing, but because there's room for three trains to pull in here, we're monitoring the amount of stuff in the warehouse and then using that to set the train limit. So here you can see we're dividing it by 3,200, which is about probably a little bit more than what goes in the train, I'm not sure off the top of my head, um, and then sending that as an L out to the station, and the station would then set its train limit based on that. So if there's enough in the warehouse to fill up one train, it set the train limit to one. If there's enough to fill, fill up two, it set it to two, and so on. So that meant when the, sta when the station was completely full, we'd have multiple trains heading out over here uh, at the same time, in order to, to try and try and fill up. And so that's, that's a nice idea, and it was kind of working. And we did exactly the same for the drop-off stations as well. So down here, we'd watch the amount of vulcanite ore in the station, div divided by minus 3.2, which means that the more we had, the lower the L signal would be over here. So if the station was completely full, we'd have a really, really low um, negative number of L. And then, we, then here, we add on 2 to that, and this makes sure that we can never take the number of trains we're requesting above 2, because there's only room for 2 trains to pull into the station here. And so if it was completely empty, we'd be asking for 2. If it was a bit full, we'd be asking for 1. If it was a bit more full than that, then we'd be asking for none. And if it was very, very full, well, I suppose we'd be asking for minus one, but in theory that's a state that you should never get into. And the station considers any negative numbers to be a zero anyway, so that works fine. This is a lovely system and worked really well, but it meant that when we were a little bit low, and especially because the trains were a bit were running quite slowly, we wouldn't call for another train until the station was already a little bit low, at which point the train would set off. And if it was coming from up here, it's not too bad, or down here, it's not too bad. But if it's coming from all the way over here, it takes quite a long time for these trains to trundle all the way around the, tr the uh, railway system over to here and then pull into the station in order to unload. And that was causing problems, because in the time it took it to get all that way around there, the station would run out of vulcanite. So there, I suppose I could have increased the number where, where trains were calling for or made, the, made us call for trains a little bit sooner. That potentially could have worked. But instead, I decided that a better way to fix it would be to just keep the, uh, the train limits on all of these stations static. So now we're not setting the train limit based on any input signals. We're just, we've just got it locked to two. And that means we will always call for two trains, no matter how much is in this warehouse here. So you can see the warehouse is completely full. We've got two trains parked in here. One's trying to unload and the other one's ready. So as soon as this one finishes unloading, it will clear off to go off to the mines. And this one will immediately pull forward and start unloading, theoretically keeping this full. And as soon as this one leaves, we will call for another train to come down from any one of the mines. And in the amount of time it takes to get through all of that vulcanite, there, there is time for one of the trains to get even from over here all the way round and to drop and to pull in and join the queue in order to drop some more off. So this is working much, much better, as you can see by the by the huge quantities of vulcanite we have available. Okay, granted we're not using any of it right now, but you know, yeah, shush, <laughs> we're, 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 we're trying. So yes, this is now working much, much better. And I've done the same thing at the other end as well. All the mine stations also have their train limits hard-coded, in this case to three, because there's room for three trains in the in the, in the, in the pickup area. Um, now we don't have quite enough trains to fill up all of the mines. So these three, are, these three are full because they're quite close. But we actually, yes, these three have all got three trains because they're quite close. The ones over here are down to only a single train each because they're a lot further away. So the trains are less likely to go over there. This could cause some issues potentially when we start to run out out of um, vulcanite over here on these patches, but there's still almost 10 million in each of them, so I think it's going to be okay for quite a while. And it, the system will still carry on working kind of, even if it, even if we start to run out over here. It'll just be a bit less efficient and effective and we'll have to put in some more mines, like this, this convenient 7 million patch here, for example. You, you, you get the idea. But there's plenty more vulcanite where these came from. And so, as you saw earlier, this is this is bringing in enough vulcanite that these systems are able to run flat out. Uh, we now seem to have enough over in Norbit that we've reduced the speed it's running at a bit. So we're just we're just producing it from the core mines at the moment, um, rather than from the rather than from the vulcanite mines. But it is working. We're able to bring through as much as we need, and that can then all just be taken up, put into the spaceship, and taken off back over to Norvis. I did have an entertaining time over on, in uh, Norbit when I was trying to fill up my spaceship with the locomotives I was going to require. Because I was parked, parked in here, and I'd, I'd set a request on one of my blue chests to say, yes, I would like to have 30 or 40 locomotives, please. And the theory is that all of the locomotives that d haven't been boosted have been taken out of the logistics system. So in theory, I should just get the ones that have been passed through over here, because we've, we've got we've got normal locomotive production going on down here, and they're being put out in, into a box, apparently, and then, oh, to be turned into space locomotives, that's fine. Uh, and also put onto a bell 
belt here. So they trundle up this belt, and then they go through this system, which we looked at quite a while back. But the idea is they get passed up here, and this puts in the first electric motor, second electric motor, third electric motor, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, all the electric motors. And you have to put them in first, because they're big. Then it puts in the energy receiver, then it puts in the batteries, and then it passes them out and puts them into a red chest up here. And so the idea behind this is that all of the locomotives that are in this red chest have been um, have been programmed, have been uh, loaded up. There you go, you can see in the equipment grid, these are all fully loaded with all the stuff that's needed. And you'll notice that they only stack to one. And then down here at the bottom, there's the other chest they're being put into to allow them to make the space trains. You can see those stack up to five, and they don't have the stuff in the equipment grid. So those are the ones that we don't want to have um, because they haven't been loaded up and made, and made into more powerful, faster trains. So they, these go into a red chest over here. We've got, a re we've got a logistics request that says, we want the bots to bring some of them over to the, uh, to the train system over all the way over, where is it, here, and drop them off in the in, in the box over here when we have a request for them. So that they'll then get put into this train that will take them up into space, where they can then be distributed to wherever they're needed. And so, in theory, that means they'll be brought over to my spaceship, they'll be put into the blue chest there, and I can trundle off with, with them and, and, and have my trains already pre-boosted, which means I don't have to go around boosting them all manually by hand by throwing all the bits and pieces in that you need, because that's a, that's a big effort and it's much, much easier to do it this way. Unfortunately, when I set it up, normal unmodified locomotives started arriving, and I've been well. I shoved some of them in a chest here, and then I eventually found out where they were coming from and why. But it was a bit frustrating. So at first, we wondered if perhaps there were just a few locomotives that had been left in the system that um, that we should that we just needed to churn through, get them out of the system, and then I could put them in into the into the chest here, and then not worry about it anymore. But they just kept coming and coming and coming, and eventually. It was, getting, it was getting ridiculous. Eventually we, were, we realised that over here in the material science production, Mike, had been, Mike is making uh, locomotives somewhere up here for the train crash data. Here we go. He's making locomotives, so cogs, locomotives, yeah, and put them onto a belt, bring them up here. Go, they go into all these machines up here and we can make them into train crash data. Great. Uh, the problem with this is that he was also unloading them into a red chest down here. And now he, he, he says he did this with the best of intentions. And the, the reason he did this was because, well, we're going to need some locomotives in space probably at some point. So why not just have another supply of them available? Then, of course, when Tristan started boosting the uh, locomotives as soon as they were built, he completely forgot that he was doing that. In fact, we all completely forgot that was being done because it was was 100 hours later or something and which is so um, hard, good, probably a good six months later in real time uh, so we didn't know we didn't remember that there was a red chest over here uh, that was filling up with locomotives so I came over smack that on the uh, smack that on the head we, we I think we turned it into a gray chest first and then then we just took all the locomotives out of it fed them into the machines around here and we've just so we, we, we fixed it. They've gone now. We're not going to have that problem again. So that was that was a bit frustrating while we tried to work out what was going on. But we finally got there. Things have calmed down a little bit and are a little bit less silly. And I've been able to get all of my uh, boosted locomotives over to Agnair where I needed them. The other thing I'm going to talk about is the scrap disposal system. So over here we have, yeah, we, we're bringing in all the scrap on all of these belts, and there's still a bit, a bit of it flowing, despite us not doing any, um, any science at the moment, which is quite impressive. Uh, but you can't really see it running properly at the moment because there's not actually all that much scrap coming through. There's just a little dribble of clean scrap. But anyway, that's all coming, getting fed in down here. But you might remember that previously we had a horrible, horrible tangle of belts down here. Now, the tangle of belts was, it was for a couple of reasons. The first one being that, well, it, it had sort of grown over time and nobody had gone in to rip it out and sort of redo it properly and nicely. And the other reason was that we, we didn't have the deep space loaders at the time. And so there was quite a lot of effort had been put into trying to get the systems to load from fast belts coming in with only slow loaders. Now we do have deep space loaders, they're still ludicrously expensive, so I've used as few of them as I realistically can, but we now have the capability to load in four fast deep space belts of, um, of scrap at any, at any given time. And so this is me, a lot of that along with using the underground belts here and also turning this into a warehouse and moving it out of where it was trapped, trapped in just over here, has meant that we've been able to get a significant upgrade on how well the scrap flows through. So it's no longer getting jammed up by all the different splitters and twisty bits and funny, funny bits in here and there and everywhere, because now every supply of scrap that's coming in has its own loader going into this warehouse. So there's none sharing it, that means things just flow much, much more nicely. So you can see this, this belt down here with scrap on it, for example, flowing straight into the side of here. Lovely, that's exactly what we want. Everything else, everything that's not scrap, well, we have various different belts coming along here. So this one we know is just going to be memory cards. So that one just goes straight underneath the warehouse and then carries on down here. It turns into a normal space belt because that's more than fast enough, but that's fine. The belts that may be mixed, I've got filter splitters along here to taking out the scrap 
pumping it straight into there, and then again underground taking it, taking the non-scrap through where it can be taken away. It's probably going to be mostly um, contaminated scrap at this point coming down here, but it's fine. It can be fed down here and go into the system that's going to deal with that. And so having sorted this out, I kind of now want to see us doing a big research. Ideally it requires both material and matter sciences, and so it's just going to do the maximum amount of scrap coming through and find out how the system's going to cope. This is going to be a big step in the right direction. However, I do worry that these three belts along here are not going to be enough to take away all of the scrap that we're going to produce when everything kicks into a high gear. We will see um, next time we actually manage to do a decent amount of science, but for now, it, I mean, I'm cautiously optimistic. It's going, to, it's going to at least be better. Um, and so, in worst case, if it backlogs a little bit up the belts, we still, as long as we still have the science packs flowing through, it's not the end of the world if, say, the material science has to run a little bit slower because it's, it's kind of overbuilt, really. There's rather a lot of it. While I'm talking about rubbish and dealing with it, um, I decided it'd be a good idea over on, in, on, on Agnea to have a bit of a clean out because we had uh, lots and lots of miscellaneous junk, stuff that we don't really need over here, stuff that could potentially be useful somewhere else, just filling up all these warehouses over here. So I thought, right, I'll get rid of a load of that. If I just chuck it into the disposal system, it'll go over here, it'll go into the trains, it'll be taken up into Agnorbit, and then from there it can be taken away by the spaceship. It'll be taken over to Norbit where it'll be unloaded into these warehouses, and then these things will go, this isn't Vulcanite, and, sent, and just chuck it out on the disposal system here, it'll go into this warehouse, be taken by train to this disposal system which will mean it'll come down here to be put into these trains, which will take it up to the other disposal system up here, it goes into here, and then because it'll be weird and unrecognised stuff, a lot of that will be chucked into this purple chest down here, which means the bots will then come over at a reasonably high priority, take that away, and just find somewhere to stow it. Ideally, a lot of it's going to be useful stuff, and so it'll end up being put back into the storage chest wherever, and then used later on for making, well, stuff. However, there's going to be quite a lot that will probably just end up in the in the chests of um, miscellanea down here. But in theory, it will at least then get taken away. As you can see these bots doing, they're taking some red belts out of here, and there's quite a lot of red belts in the system. There's 2,600 of them. But they're then going to bring them over here to, to put into the, uh, the belt building area. And that means we can then have a bit more of a supply coming through in order to be turned into the higher tier belts and just passed up the chain in order to be made into whatever all the way up to purple belts. So there is, it, it does does get recycled as long as it's sort of useful stuff like red belts. In theory, everything should get reused and taken over and brought over and, and, uh, and reused where necessary. The problem, however, and you know there was going to be a problem, didn't you, is that... Um, I hadn't realised that this uh, spaceport was using quite an old version of the of the spaceport system. Now Mark has made quite a lot of updates to it in the time we've been playing, and one of, one of the updates is to have the system be smart enough to recognise what's been put into the warehouses on the spaceship and therefore not unload it on the other side. And that's achieved by watching by, with uh, these belt readers over here, which are watching what's going through, uh, they're enabling and disabling, but they're also reading what's going through as a pulse, and that's being fed down in here, and somewhere along here we have this memory cell that uh, has a huge amount of st stuff stored in it, and this is basically keeping track of everything that has passed through the system. So you can see in the time that this has been running, so since the upgrade, we've transported 676,000 Vulcanite, 246,000 stone, and so on and so on, all the way down to one dead train battery and one piece of cable for some reason. That's a weird one. That shouldn't have gone in there. But it has. That might cause problems later, actually. I should check that out. Anyway, so that is then fed over to the other side over here, where it's then used as a negative to be fed onto the, uh, onto the inserters along here, along with the inventory of the ship. And that means that anything that's been passed into the ship won't then be taken back out of the ship. And this means that we can put absolutely anything we want into the loading system, and, it, and uh, know it'll be loaded into the ship and then won't be unloaded. Um, as long as we make sure we don't feed in any of the things over here that we do want to unload. So space train batteries, uh, meteor defense ammo, uh, elevator cable, sulfur and ice. Those are the things that need to be brought out over here because that's what the spaceship brings over here. But as long as none of those accidentally get passed in, it should be absolutely fine, which is why I'm worrying about that piece of um, elevator cable down at the bottom now on the, on the input signal, but it's not on the output signal. So maybe that's being, that must be being fed from somewhere else. Maybe, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not 100% not sure. Things are a little bit funny. Maybe that's not the memory cell. I, I'm not sure exactly. But anyway, the point is it's being, it's being remembered and that wasn't happening before. So when I chucked all of that junk in the system down on the planet, it flowed up here, it flowed into the spaceship and it immediately came back out again and was put into this warehouse. I had a bit of a rage. I uh, asked Mark about it. He said, oh, you're on an old version. So I upgraded this area. And to do that, I basically, I pulled out all of the um, combinators and then just pasted in the blueprint over the top. So it re reconfigured 
reconfigure everything and make sure everything was set correctly and all the cables were in the right places and all that sort of thing. And then I just chucked all of the uh, all the junk back into these warehouses here. It got put into the spaceship and it immediately got unloaded from the spaceship again and went back into here. And I, I raged once again and then realised that that's because I put it into the wrong warehouses. You can't put stuff into these ones. You need to put it into this one here because it's when they, when it comes out of here that it's tracked and then remembered. So you put stuff in here. It'll flow through into it will flow through into these warehouses. Then it'll get put into the ship and then it will actually get taken away and recycled. So eventually I managed to get the system working, but it uh, it took a little bit of head scratching and a little bit of uh, a bit of confusion to get it to that point. And I think that's quite a nice place to stop the video. I've been going for a little while now. This probably should be about the right sort of length. Who knows? It's, it's very it's very difficult to tell exactly how long a video is going to be when you record it because the editing process tends to it knocks off about a third usually. Um, so, but it's but it's not exactly a third. It tends to vary a little bit. Oh dear, a train has run out of power. Uh, on in melancholia. Okay, well that can be Mike's problem for next time. That's actually that is probably my fault because I've not been feeding enough batteries out to him. So we'll have to try and sort that one out. Sorry, Mike. Um, anyway, yes, this is probably going to be roughly the right sort of length. Uh, we, we, we shall see. And so I think that's a good point to call it. In tomorrow's video, we shall carry on looking around at what other people have been doing, particularly Tristan at this point, um, and a little bit, and probably a little bit more of Mike as well. So there's been uh, more, more playing around with anchors and uh, pyramids. Tristan has improved the graph down over on Norvis that tells us about our supplies, so we'll have a look at that on the way through. And he's done a load of miscellaneous fixes here, there, and everywhere. And, um, and I did a little bit of experimenting and got hit in the face by a, by a robot. So we'll talk about all of that tomorrow, and then we'll be back on Monday as well with the uh, with the stream from a bit more Factorio K2SE, getting all of these problems sorted out, trying to get the science running again a bit more uh, a bit more reliably, um, see if we can get the Holmium up and flowing properly. Uh, I'll be back on Wednesday with some more uh, Satisfactory, where I should be building up the factory bigger and faster and stronger, and probably going off to try and find more iron, because we always seem to need more iron, and steel actually for that matter. Those are always the shortages as far as I can tell. And of course I'll be back at the weekend with uh, more, more catch-up videos from the last stream. So, thank Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Since you're still here, I'm sure you have, so please make sure you're subscribed. And I'll be back with lots and lots of content over the next week, so I hope to see you then. Bye-bye.